BGSUFalcons.com. I'm Evan Pivnik, joined by the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons, Chris Bergeron. Coach, thanks for joining me. Uh, the weekend in Alaska, a loss on Saturday and a win on Sunday. Just assess the weekend overall. I think the weekend overall, Evan, was just okay. And, and the reason I say that is because we didn't give ourselves much of an opportunity on Saturday, which was game one of the series. Uh, full, full marks to Anchorage, they came out and kind of took the momentum they got from last weekend series at Huntsville. And, and they scored on their first shot Saturday, and we were kind of chasing the game from then on. I mean, we showed a little bit of life by scoring late in the first period to tie the game, but they came back and scored 30 seconds later, less than that, the very next shift, and make it 2-1. to And like I said, it was, it was kind of indicative of that whole game. Then we put ourselves in a little bit of a spot where now we're going to have to answer a, a, a poor effort with a really good one to give ourselves a, a chance at a split. And I thought we did that, you know. So, uh, you know, I think, in a situation where you're going the road that far away, you want to give yourself two opportunities to, to win. I don't think we did that. That's where the answer comes from. But ultimately, looking back at it now, we'll take a split any time on the road. After Anchorage scored that first goal on Saturday, how big was it on Sunday to respond to that first goal? Yeah, I know. It was, it was huge. But, but I knew we were in a better place physically and mentally, more mentally, I guess, uh, uh, from that first shift on, on, on Sunday. I mean, it, the, the, the vibe on the bench was different. The, the the jump in our step was different. We still made mistakes, but that's not what I'm talking about. We were, we were ready to compete at the level that we've shown we can compete at. And, and, and our guys ultimately weren't happy with the level we played at Saturday, and, and they wanted to make amends for it. And yes, I want them to make amends for what happened and not play your, uh, our level of game on Saturday, but I also wanted them to take advantage of that opportunity. We had an opportunity on Sunday to, to play a game, and. Uh, and, and, and to feel good about how we're playing, and we were able to do that. Chris Nell got a second shutout of the season on Sunday. What do you like from him so far this season? He looks really, really confident to me. Uh, his numbers last year for the first half of the year were good, especially his win and loss numbers. Uh, and then there was times where he looked confident, but Chris has looked confident in every one of his starts. I mean, you think about the, the Saturday night game here against Ohio State, at RIT, at Western, where he was playing behind a team that wasn't at their best. Uh, and, and then this start here, uh, he's looked confident from the beginning. And, and uh, like I said, after the Ohio State game, I think it was, there's a fire in Chris now and uh, not getting the results he wanted in Western or at RIT. I think he, he, he showed that uh, that wasn't going to happen. He wasn't going to let that happen. And Sunday, he had a look about him that it was going to take a, a pretty special play to score on him. And, he obviously proved that uh, not letting any go in. So I think from from my my spot, which is you know the head coach stopped the puck. That's what I tell him. Uh, he he looks real confident. Uh, special teams wise, Saturday uh, team did not score a power play goal, but finally Sunday uh, the skid came to an end. Kevin Dufour scored. Uh, it's got to be a weight off team shoulders. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're hoping that it's a, it's, it's a momentum builder as well. I mean, we, we have a decent record with only playing one game at home. Um, we're, we're, we're fine with where we stand, right? And, and we've done it with a, with a power play that hadn't scored and some individuals that are normally power play scorers that haven't scored. So, and I'm not talking about Kevin, uh, you know, I, I just think that uh, there is potential for us. Our, our power play is just a matter of when and not if. We, we've... We've got too many good players not to have a good power play. Um, but the guys that are out there have to know that, you know, you're adding a kid like Bayless to your lineup this week, and uh, he's a power play guy. That's, that's another competition for people to be out there, and we have to hold players accountable to that. That's all there is to it. I think if you have that internal competition on the power play for that ice time and for those minutes, uh, you're either getting the job done or you're not. And getting the job done is results. And to this point, our results have been very good. So uh, hopefully we can use that momentum that we, we built on Sunday because I thought both uh, power plays were, were, were pretty solid. We, we got the result in the second one, but the first one was good as well with really good chances. Uh, we can stay at that level, we'll be fine. You mentioned Stephen Bayless, someone who had to sit up for six games in the season. Uh, what do you expect his response to be when he gets the answer? Well, he's really excited to play. And what I told him before practice today was he, the, the weight of the world is not on his shoulders. This isn't the savior coming to take us to the promised land. He's a... He is a, a good hockey player. He's a freshman. Um, 
but he's a guy that's been working real hard and, and deserves to play. And um, you know, he, he sat out when he was supposed to sit out to make it right with the NCAA, and and now it's now let's get ready to go. And uh, you know, from our perspective as coaches, it, we're adding a, a really good forward to a group of good forwards. And, and you talk about that internal competition on the power play. Now that internal competition is every day for five on five just to be in the game. And then ice time once we're in the game. And that, to me, is going to raise everybody's level. And if it doesn't, then you're going to get left behind. And I find that if you're wired right, you don't want to get left behind. And I think that's what Steven's going to do. Individually, he plays the game the way we want to play it. Uh, but he's still, there's still going to be some, some ups and downs there just because of, he's in his first year and the only game experience he has is the exhibition game against Toronto. So we're excited to, to add him to our lineup. We're excited for him that he gets to play. Uh, but we also know that those expectations have to be, um, you know, have to be realistic for him. And, and, and the, the, the reality is it's his first game, first real game at the college level. Now this weekend coming up, uh, two home games against uh, Lake Superior State Lakers. It's got to be nice to finally have a little bit of consistency not jumping around from the region. Training. Yeah, we're uh, uh, we're looking forward to it. Lake Superior's coming off a tough weekend at home where they where they got swept. I know both games on paper looked one-sided in their favor, and, and, and both results were <laughs> one-sided in the other team's favor. So they're going to want to make amends for that. They're a team that works extremely hard. Uh, Damon and his staff are trying to change a culture up there, and, and, and and they've done that, and there's work ethic there, and there's talent there. Uh, we're excited to play at home. Hopefully, that you know the, these six of the first seven games being on the road are going to pay off, with eight of the next ten being at home, and we can take advantage of uh, of the, the VGSU ice arena and our home crowd. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time and best luck this week. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.